let's get some analysis and bring in journalist and author Soraya Lenny from Melbourne. Uh, hello there, Soraya. Um, we heard there from Reza, it looks like we are going to have a low voter turnout. Uh, in your opinion, what are the main reasons for this? I think the main reason for the turnout, the low voter turnout, it's predicted anyway, is the mass disqualification. There's really no candidate that excites the population um, the way a bigger name candidate like Rouhani, for example, in 2013, 2017 did. I think that's uh, that's what's really missing here is that that big candidate to excite the population. And we've seen high voter turnout usually goes along with reformist candidates and moderate candidates. We saw that in the Khatami years as well, Mir Hussain, Musabi Karubi in 2009, and then of course Rouhani. We don't have that in this election as well. I also think the other problem is the fact that the Biden administration hasn't repealed Trump era sanctions and maximum pressure. And I think if they did that, when, they came, when the new US administration came in, there may have been a little bit more motivation from the Iranian public to participate in this election and perhaps less motivation from the Guardian Council to disqualify so many people. Uh, some experts predict that the front runner is uh, Ibrahim Raisi, a conservative. Uh, he's been active in politics for a long time. Tell us more about him and what impact would his win have on the region itself? Raisi has uh, been very active in the Islamic Republic since the revolution in 1979. He's been a prosecutor for most of that time. He's worked in the judiciary. Uh, he has a, a rather patchy human rights record if you speak to people about 1988 massacres of political prisoners. Um, that's a, a heavy point of contention as well. Uh, but in more recent years, he's been the head of the largest charity in Iran, one of the Bonyads, and then judiciary chief. Uh, which he's been in. He, of course, lost in a landslide election to Rouhani in 2017, but he's really uh, made some uh, steps to boost his popularity in the last four years. His popularity has doubled. I don't really think that his administration will change much regionally speaking. I think uh, Iranian state policy will remain state policy vis-a-vis -vis Iraq and Syria, and the president won't have uh, much to say on that. And foreign policy, quite frankly, is not Raisi's strong suit. One of the key issues for Iranians uh, is lifting the U.S. sanctions, uh, is the economy that's been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic. Um, how will the elections impact the ongoing talks in Vienna? Well, the JCPOA, the nuclear deal, is now state policy. So that's not going to change with a change of administration. I do think that there is a small window here where this should get done and needs to get done because by the time the new president is sworn in, that should be around August, that means there technically would be a new negotiating block and team members to deal with. And, you know, this JCPOA has been in the works for a very long time. There's a lot of um, a good morale, I guess, that was built in relationships between all of the sides and the Iranian parties. So I don't think changing the negotiating teams uh, will be very beneficial. I do think the deal will be done, and I think it's in everybody's benefit, including the new president's, if that gets done before August. Okay, Soraya, I will leave it there for now. Thank you so much for that insight for us.